All right, what's going on everyone? So today we're gonna begin our blunder course and basically we're gonna start from all the way to the beginning and then go as far as you need to know to at least work your way through and create cool projects. I'll show some examples of things you can do with blunder right now. Now that you know what you could do with blunder as we go through the weeks, we'll basically start from and work our way out. So before we even start with anything, I just wanted to let you know that on the left corner right here, there is, um, it basically shows all the buttons that I'm pressing. So for example, I'm pressing A right now and it shows what it does here and all of my key binds and everything of that, it'll just be displayed here. So if you ever get confused throughout the process, just go back to the video and you can see my buttons right here. All right. So now once we got that out of the way, um, Let's start actually learning how to use Blender. So as you saw previously, um, I move around, uh, you could move around Blender, but it's not the way you expect it to be with other softwares. You can't just click with your mouse and drag around. The way you do it is by pressing the middle mouse. So as you can see, I hold the middle mouse down and then I move my mouse left and right. And you can see that it's going the direction I pointed at. So that's how you rotate. To move around, all you have to do is just press shift while doing that and hold down the middle mouse button as well. So you can see I'm moving here, I rotate and then move again. So that's how you move around. And then to zoom in, uh, all you have to do is just scroll your wheel up and down. That's how you do it. So now that we know how to navigate around the Blender workspace, let's learn how to interact with the objects. So the way you do that is by actually just simply clicking on them. And now you see there's an outline, which means that we're controlling this object. So for example, what would you want to do with a cube, right? So there's obviously to move it around, right? So the way you do that is by pressing G. And as you can see now, I can move it anywhere I want. But for example, you want it to be precise and you want it to simply just move to the left. All you have to do is press G and then X right afterwards. So now you can see that it's only moving on the X axis. So in Blender, there's X axis, Y axis, and then Z axis. And you can control it simply just pressing by the button. And for example, you want to just move it um, in a 2D space instead of 3D. All you have to do is press the G button to move it around and then press shift and the axis you don't want it to move around. So for example, Z, right? It's only moving in a 2D dimension. So for example, we don't want it to move in the X axis. We do G to move it around and then shift and X. Now it's only going up and then in the Y axis. So the same rule applies uh, with rotating and scaling and to rotate, all you have to do is press R. So now you can see that the object is rotating. But for example, if we want to be more precise, we do R and then we pick a direction. So the Y axis and you can see that it's spinning only in that direction. And then to scale stuff, all you have to do is press S. And you can see the cube is getting bigger and smaller. And also, you can control the way it scales by doing this. And for example, now we did all this modifying to the cube, but let's just say we want it back in its original form, right? So what we do is press Control Z, and you can see how it transforms back to its original form. So it's similar to how other softwares work. Control Z is to revert stuff, and then Control Shift Z is to bring it back to the original form before you reverted it back, like that. So now that we know how to move the cube around, scale it, and rotate it, let's uh, learn on how we could create other objects. So we have a cube, we know how to scale it, we know how to rotate it, but how could we make this cube into a circle? Well, in Blender, you could actually um, import built-in objects into your scene. The way you do that is by pressing Shift A. So you can see a pop-up has showed up here, and the first bar is meshes. So this is, for example, if you want to make a sphere, right? You spawn it, you press G to move it around, and it works the same way a cube did. You could use the same characteristics. So let me move this to the side, scale it. You could choose the side you want it to scale in. You could rotate it and then you could also move it around. So for example, we just want to work on a sphere or we just want to work on a cube. How could you delete this? 
The way you do that is a bit weird in Blender, but you just press X. And then you confirm that you want to delete something, and it then disappears. And you, for example, we want to move this back to its inner form. And um, we want to add something else to it. So um, let's add a plane. A plane is basically a 2D version of the cube. So if we were to, um, this is the navigation. You could, um, so for example, you want to precisely look from above. You press the Z right here. You could also use the numpad shortcuts, which I will send a link to, and you could check all the key binds on a Google document if you ever get lost. But what you do here is basically it's a cube. You can't tell the difference, but when you look at it from a 3D space, it's just a plane, right? So here's something I'd like to introduce that's uh, a bit more complex, but it's very important when you're working with Blender. So we know in geometry class, like we've all learned spheres, uh, cubes, and all of that. But um, it's not very commonly talked about, but there's also vertices to these, right? So there's obviously the edges, there's the faces itself, and then there's the uh, vertices. So to see those specific vertices, all you have to do is press tab. So now you can see these dots, right? So when we move around... You can see that each one can be controlled similarly to how you control the object. So when you press G, it starts moving around. And then if you do two, for example, you could scale it or you could rotate it. So now that you know that there's just such an option, there's also um, three different modes when it comes to selecting vertices, right? So there's the individual vertices. There is, if you see on the top corner right here, left corner, uh, there's also selecting edges, so it's similarly to just basically selecting the two vertices. It just saves you time doing it. So, for example, we just want to move this side up and make a different shape. We do so by pressing the edge instead of the vertices. Uh, similarly, you could do that with faces as well. So, you could see that I'm selecting a whole face here. So, if we want to, for example, make this longer, we could move the face and now it's a uh, longer shape so the reason this comes in handy is because so we know that we could uh, extend things out so right now it's stretched right uh, but what if for example you want to add like uh, another piece coming out from here we have to go manually add the cube uh, make sure it's lined up so it doesn't look weird and then stick it out so it's a very tedious process and when you get into smaller things see for example it does, it's not lined up so this is where vertices come in hand so whenever you press tab you can see the vertices right what you can also do is actually create vertices inside your shapes so the way you do that is by pressing control r so now you can see there's a like, yellow line appearing and you can control how many you want to add by scrolling up or down but for our example, we'll do um, two. And then you could move it up and down the shape. And you just do that by moving your mouse. So for example, we added this now. And you can see that there's more vertices to the shape now. And for example, if you wanted to make this longer, there's two ways of doing it. So first, you select the vertices. You could do it either the long way or just by selecting the sh uh, faces option. And then you could either move it up by pressing G and in this case you can see how it's stretching the whole thing out it could be useful in some cases but for example we just want this area to go up without moving the rest the way you do that is by pressing E and what it does it extrudes the shape out so right now this is kind of separate from the rest of these so usually when you move it around it moves everything around but when you extrude it it just interferes with the, sh uh, the face itself so now I'm just pressing Ctrl Z to revert it to its original form. You can see that there is a limit to the amount of times you can revert things back. So it's always important to try to save files in case something goes wrong so you can revert it back. Uh, with the edit mode, there's com uh, there comes an advantage of being able to be more precise with your edits. So for example, if you want to, so first we go into edge mode. So we could select edges. Um, for example, we want to smoothen this edge out, right? 
So what you do in this case is you select it in edit mode and then you press control B. And right now nothing's happening, but when you start moving the mouse, you could see there's a, the edge splits. And you could control by how much based on uh, how many times you uh, the wheel scrolls. So if I want to add more sides to it, all I have to do is uh, scroll the wheel up and you can see that it just becoming smoother. And the less you move your mouse, the, the less the, it expands out. So for example, if you want just the edge to be smoothed out, you could do it that way. Additionally, uh, you might have noticed that in the center, there is this uh, red and uh, white circle with the uh, black things coming out. That's the center of your um, workstation, and that's where everything spawns whenever you create it. So, for example, if we're uh, creating a cylinder, the center of mass, which is the orange dot, always spawns directly in the middle of this um, red and white circle. So, you could actually change that. So, for example, if we want to create something on top of the cylinder, all we do is press Shift and then we right click. So you can see that the circle changed. So now that we spawn something, it actually spawns on top of the cylinder. So again, if you press um, the wireframe um, mode, it shows you the objects in between. And there's a shortcut for that, which is Shift Z. It changes the modes. It's very useful, especially when you're uh, working in edit mode. Here's another example of beveling. That, that's what it's called when you um, smooth the edges out and do control B so for example right here and you could control by how much it smoothens the edge out so right here it, it's almost like a pyramid right but if we were to add a lot of scrolls it almost becomes um, kind of like a dome kind of shape alright so now that we're in the edit mode itself, let's talk about making more complex objects out of using edit mode. So, as this shape by itself, it's relatively complex, but it doesn't have much depth to it. So, for example, uh, we want to, you know, make this hollow. What you do is you go into edit mode, you select, you make sure it's in the face, face mode. You select the bottom of the cylinder, right? And what you do is you press I. And now what I does, it creates a smaller version of the surface. So for example, it'll be easier to explain it with the cube. But if we select the cube and press I, you can see that there's a, th there's a face being added inside the cube, which is smaller than the actual face from the outside. And what that allows us to do is with extruding, you could create a hollow or create shapes with it. So all you do is you press E to extrude, right? And instead of making it go out, you just bring it in like that. And obviously you could tweak with the faces itself. So scaling it works. Oh, and make sure you have the um, proportional editing off, right? So you scale this up and it changes the shape. You could move it around and you could rotate it like this. It does create weird um, shapes sometimes when you're working with edit mode, but if you tweak around with it, it should generally produce a normal result. So now let's get back to this um, cylinder dome kind of shape. So let's just say we want to make it hollow on the inside. We do the same process, we um, select the inside. We press I to make a smaller circle inside of that, and then we just press E to extrude it inwards, like that. Now you gotta make sure to not extrude it too much, because if it goes too far out, it sticks out into the outside. And the way you could check that is by pressing um, the side view. So d d these are how you navigate through, side view, bottom view. It's very helpful. And then the shortcut shift Z and you could see where the face is inside the shape. So now there's a hole inside the dome. Alright. 
And so, for example, um, we deleted all that. Let's just say we're restarting. Um, now we have this annoying little thing not centered, right? So whenever we make a shape, it's not centered, so it gets annoying. The way you fix that is by pressing Shift and then C. It offsets it and then resets it back to its original form. Now that we've talked about mainly how to handle shapes, um, let's talk about the camera. So the camera is basically how your render views this world. So although you're seeing it from this angle, whenever you render things, it ends up being from this angle, right? And the way you see how it's going to render is by pressing this toggle camera view. And the shortcut for that is numpad zero, which is written right below that. So as you can see that whenever you render this, it's not going to show the whole cube. So you can fix this by either moving the object or by selecting the camera like this and then lowering it. You could do that while inside the view. You could also rotate the camera. So for example, you want to get a cool shot of the cube from the side or you want to scale the camera. It's also possible, although it doesn't change the view much. So See, scaling it doesn't really change the view. There is ways, there are ways of changing the camera focal lens, but that's more complicated, and we'll talk about it next week. Um, so once we got that done, let's um, talk about copying things. So, for example, let me delete the shape. Let's uh, let's go through the mesh options. One of them is the monkey. So let's say we've made this by hand. You know, it took us five hours to do this, and now we want another monkey head. So instead of spending those five hours to recreate this object, what you can do is simply press Control C and Control V, and what it does, it creates a copy of that object, similar to other programs. However, there is a shortcut in Blender. If you press Shift D, what it does, it automatically creates a copy. And you can also move the copy around instantly. So we just did that with two buttons instead of copying and pasting it and then pressing the G button to move it around. So that's how you copy things in Blender. Um, we will, next lesson, talk about the uh, different uh, modifiers. And we'll also talk about the different windows here that you see here. But for now, we'll talk about the basics. So the um, transform item here uh, basically just shows you the location, the rotation, scale, and the dimensions of the object. So for example, if we were to scale it up, you can see that the scale changes here and the dimensions change as well. So for example, we want to move it around. You could do it from the panel as well, but you could also do it from the viewport. You can see that the location has changed. This is very useful when you're trying to make precise um, calculations so for example um, you want something to be uh, far apart specifically two meters apart you use this to calculate that um, so other than the item section here you won't need any of these these are just add-ons that you could add later on but you don't have to worry about that for now um, one important thing is these modes right here on uh, top right and what they basically are is uh, uh, level of detail so if you go all the way down you get into the wireframe which is basically you see all the edges all the faces all the vertices so for example if I press tab here and then I go into the vertice mode you could see the individual vertices and you could see them through the wall this is very useful when you're working in like if you have an object inside of an object so you could see what's going on this is your standard uh, form it, it just shows you a slight bit of shadows and just the base color of the object itself. When you press the shading view, viewport, it, it does a more complex version. So you can see the textures whenever you add those. We'll talk about that later on. And then the final mode is the render mode. So this is, as you can see, it adds a lot of detail, but it also slows your computer down. So I wouldn't recommend you to use this mode until you're ready to render. And since we, I mentioned rendering, let's talk more in detail about that. 
And what rendering is, is basically your computer just calculating a bunch of shadows and figuring out the realistic, how an object would look like in a realistic world. The way you render things is by going to the top left and pressing render. And then there's the option of uh, rendering an image and then rendering an animation. So an animation is what you see on the bottom here. You can animate stuff that's uh, later on we'll talk about it. But it basically just, if you're trying to move an object, if your character's moving, you want to render an animation since it's, uh, it's continuous motion. When you're just rendering a picture, that's when you do the render image. Alright, now that we talked about rendering, let's talk about adding textures to Blender. And the way you do that is by going on this uh, window to the right. And you see this uh, sort of globe that says material properties on it. You press that and you can see that a window popped up and it says new right here. Whenever you press new, it creates a new material. So let's press new right here. And you can see that a bunch of information has popped up here. So for now, we don't have to worry about this. But if you go into the uh, viewport shading, you can see that the color matches with the base color uh, material right here. So for example, if we want to change this color, all you have to do is click on this white um, text box and then move the cursor around. So for example, if we want different colors, we just rotate it around and uh, the color of the monkey changes based on that. Um, once you get more uh, complicated into understanding Blender, there are certain things you could do to change the reflectiveness of it. So for example, if you want a mirror, you could change that, or if you want more uh, complex details, you could also add that. But that's for next week, um, so we won't uh, go into detail for that just yet. So another thing that we got to talk about that's very important is whenever I mentioned uh, rendered mode, so whenever you press this here, right, you can see the shadows going on here, um, and basically when you uh, move the monkey around, you rotate it, the shadows change accordingly. So the way uh, the reason that happens is because there are um, light objects in Blender. So do you see this? Whenever you create a new file, there's a sun um, already built in, and that sun controls um, how lights reflect the uh, objects. So for example, if we press Shift A to add stuff in and scroll down, there's the light option here. There's uh, different types of lights you can add. So for example, a point light, uh, if you zoom in by uh, zooming or by scrolling your mouse wheel, you could see that um, if you add, uh, if you change the color of the light, so for example, we want a, a yellow light and then you change the power. So you increase it, for example, to a hundred, the light changes on the monkey. So Lights are very important because if you don't have any lights, it's, it ends up just being a black render, so you can't see anything in it. All right, so now that we talked about lights, let me just go a tiny bit more in detail with uh, text. So whenever you press tab, you see all these vertex, right? So you could move them around individually. You could select them like this and move them as a group. But what if, for example, you want to make this um, head bigger uh, from the top, right? So how would you do that? The way you do that is by pressing the shortcut O. And as you can see that whenever I press O, this uh, thing turns on and off. And then whenever I press G, a circle should pop up around the vertex I'm, ch I'm trying to change. And you could increase the influence by scrolling down and up. So for example, if it's, um, medium size, it controls the closer vertexes, but then if I increase it, it moves the entire monkey. So this is very useful for example, if you're trying to raise a specific area and change it, you scroll it down and then you could modify um, the object itself without having to select all these different uh, vertices.